amidst the insecurity challenges rife in the southeast, calls for Igbo presidency is apparently still in existence. A former governor of Anambra State, Chief Chukweme Kaizefe, has accused sponsors of the ongoing violence in the region of plotting to thwart uh, the call by the zone to produce the next president. He vindicated members of the prescribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and the Eastern Security Network from the recent killings of police personnel and the torching of public institutions in the zone. He also ordered that findings showed that those behind the killings and the destructions are not Igbo. Well, joining me to discuss this is Bestman Jumbunze. He is a security consultant and Chukwu Noye Okereke is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Bestman, because you obviously are um, a security person. And let's examine what's happening in the Southeast. Um, a lot of people would say that this has been a place where there was relative peace for a long time. And then all of a sudden, it's become a, a hotbed of violence. Uh, explain to us why all of a sudden the Southeast is this hot. Well, <clears throat> when we say all of a sudden, um, it didn't just happen overnight. I think um, the signs have been there all the while. It's been brewing. It's been cooking. And um, the, the actors have been rehearsing. But unfortunately, we are in a situation, I mean, we are in a country where we don't plan ahead, where we don't preempt things. We are always reactive even in our actions on security matters so it didn't come to me as a surprise but for a long time some of us have warned and we warned and warned severally that this was going to happen so i'm not surprised that it's happening now um do you agree with the stance of Ezefe that um, sponsors of this violence in the southeast are trying to um stop the clamor for Igbo presidency, that they're trying to make the Southeast look bad so that there will not be any hope for their presidency, um, you know, decision? Well, um, I don't think anybody, any organization in the Southeast started the clamor for Igbo presidency earlier than my group started. I have a group called Indigo Igbo Integration Movement, and I am. And we started um, the clamor for Igbo 20, Igbo presidency in 2023. I mean, a president of, um, I mean, of Igbo extraction, come 2023. I will start at it prior to the 2019 elections. So if there is anybody orchestrating violence to probably dim the lights of Ndibo or to probably gain something from it, I don't think um, I will subscribe to that. I think. It's a failure of governance, it's a failure of um, proactiveness, and it's also to a large extent a failure of the Igbo elites in controlling what we are seeing today. We had every opportunity to have nipped it in the board hmm. long before now. Interesting. Um, so I, I, I'm just trying to understand, when you say the Igbo elites, you're talking about, um, you're talking about the chiefs, you're talking about the... Um, Aze's, you're talking about the ruling class in itself, our governors, our members of the National Assembly. You're saying that all of these people have failed in their different capacities to need this situation in the bottom. That's why we're here, where we are today. Uh, I, I'll say to I, over the years, I've been writing and I've said something. My respect for the universe in um, is profound in the sense that the Yorubas will, the, the southwestern Nigerians, I mean the Yoruba elite, will hardly allow non state actors dictate their narratives. They will not keep quiet and allow non state actors set the tone for how the whole world will perceive the Yoruba man. Much as they have agitations, much as everybody is allowed to speak and, um, I mean, involved in activism of any sort, the Yoruba, ruling, the Yoruba elites will ensure that the narrative conforms 
in quote to the Omolu Abi culture. Mm -hmm. And once you are going, you are derailing, they will ensure that your voice is not the one that dictates how they are perceived. In, in, in my in my southeastern Nigeria, the elite will rather keep quiet, play to the gallery, leave the stage for non-state actors. Mm -hmm. Even when the non-state actors have good reasons, which I have also said long before now, that the compromise of the Igbo elites will one day snowball into our inability to even go back home. Yeah. Therefore, when we're supposed to take up the challenge, when we're supposed to, um, what I call, appropriate their grievances and take it up, would rather play the ostrich, would rather grandstand. And that is exactly what is happening, what has snowballed into the crisis that we have today. Okay. Because I can, I can remember Kupu Zodima was at the prison to see Namdekanu. I can remember many of the other people were playing in solidarity. Much as the young man might have good reasons for what he's doing, but you see, you are in danger when you allow non-state actors dictate your tune and and give and give kind of description to your narrative. Okay, it's dangerous. Let me go to um, Chukunoye to um, see if he actually agrees with you. Chukunoye, um, Ezefe has been quoted to say, and I quote him directly, that the insurrection um, is meant to provoke the Ndigbos. Um, why would anybody want to provoke the people in the East? What? To what end would this be for? Because he's also pointed fingers at the fact that the people who have been propagating violence in the region have been caught on camera and they are not Igbos. And that somebody is obviously grandstanding and trying to make the Igbos look bad. Where do you, where do you stand on this one? I'm so sorry. We, I think we lost that connection. So let me go back to um, Best Man. Uh, Best Man... Like I said, um, he's saying that this insurrection um, is meant to provoke. So, but you are saying that the problem of the South is, is the South Easterners themselves. I'd like to refer you to um, the recent um, Ohaneze election where apparently fingers were pointed to the Southeast governors for the problem that they faced on the day of this election. And the fact that there are a group of people who still do not accept the man who emerged as the president of Ohanes Ndigo, which is, um, you know, a social cultural organization that represents the strong evil um, people from the southeast. I'm wondering to myself, and I asked that question to uh, the Ohanes members I had on my show, if there is no form of solidarity and togetherness within the Igbo nation, how do you intend to come together to stand behind one man and say this is the person we want or these are the people we want to push forward in whatever political parties to be presidency um, candidates? Truth is, um, the average Igbo man is an independent character. Um, it might be tough um, saying uh, the Igbo should come together under one umbrella, which has also been one of my one of my postulations that there's a major challenge with us in Nibu, which is either ex politics of extremism, either extreme love or extreme hate, which has not done us any good. But the truth is, the, the Ohanese, as a social cultural group, you don't expect it to be, I mean, you don't expect everybody there to have one voice because everything is politics now. Within the organization, you have the APC, you have the PDP, you have the APGA, you have every other political group represented, and people are pushing their own interests. The man that I met, the president of Hanese, fantastic human being, good man, but the, the, the opposition to his candidacy is also not surprising to me, because all is about politics right now. And we cannot say that the Indians cannot speak with one voice. We speak with one voice. But it is such that we have allowed too many things to derail to the point that it is now, that it's now looking as if um, it is peculiar to Ndibu not to be able to come together and present somebody. Hey, if you say today that the North Central 
should produce the president, the presidency. I mean, sorry, the, produce the, the president. We are amazed that some people will rise up and challenge Yaya Bello, even as he's the person in the forefront one. If you say the Southwest, people will come up and challenge that Shuaibu Lamet. So it's not peculiar to Igbos, and that narration does not suit the Igbos. Unfortunately, we have given flesh to some of these um, nuances that does not really describe the Igbo man. So w what is the solution to the problem now? Because militarizing the South is, is not actually get, getting any solutions right now. What do the people in the Southeast, including the governors, um, I know that there has been, uh, uh, I know that there has been um, a paramilitary or a security outfit that's been put on, I think it's called Ibubiago, um, to police Ibubiago. Or, or help the police in, you know, um, the security issues that they're facing. But is that really the solution to the problem? Because it is brewing. The sit-at-home order um, that was put out um, um, by IPOB uh, a lot, made a lot of people stay at home. Again, it makes us really wonder who is in charge of the Southeast. Is it the governors or the IPOB? Um, the truth is um, that people stay at home might not be out of obedience to IPOB, which could be out of fear. And more, more, it's basically more out of fear. That's one. Um, the Ebubiago, I don't even know how much they are on ground as a, as a, para, as a para force to help the police in what they are doing right now. But I also remember it's time for consultations, heavy consultations, deep consultations, and when we explore consultations, before we now begin to look at the issue of probably confrontations, if you don't consult and you start with confrontations, you will get the result that we are getting right now. Many of us are there, we have made presentations that, hey, let's go this way. Let's use consultations. Let's meet with the people. Let's know what their grievances are, which was what my group, the Indigo Integration Movement, was doing. We needed to know what's the grievance of the Igbo man. How do you integrate the Igbo man into the, into the mainstream? What are the things that he's demanding for? This is the man that's represented all over the world. The Igbo man is the one that travels everywhere. The Igbo man is the one that does not, that breaks ground to make things happen where it doesn't seem to be. Okay. Therefore, there must be some grievances, consultations, consultations before confrontations. All right. That well, is my recipe. Thank you very much. Betsman Day is a security consultant. Thank you for speaking with us on the show. Well, we'll Thank take you. a short break. And when we come back, we'll first of all find out what Nigerians have to say about the Ibo presidency. And right after that, I will give you my take. Um, first of all, I think South has been ready for a long time. And I cannot specifically say this person. But then, Igbos have, um, they've shown their team spirit for a long time. They've shown their ability to lead. They've shown their ability to thrive in different places. Put an Igbo man anywhere. He would, like, he doesn't force leadership out of himself. It's just natural with them. And I think that the only reason why people, in quotes, feel like they are not ready is because they think, okay, when an Igbo man gets there, he's going to, you know, break his people away and then scatter Nigeria. Yes, Saudis, they are ready to produce Igbo man as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because they have been ma ma marginalized for a very long time. Uh, they haven't been given such opportunity to kind of come up with a president to lead this country. And they, yeah, they occupy some major states and they play a major role in the economy of Nigeria. They have the capacity and they deserve to be a president of Nigeria because they are an indigenous. They are also an indigenous of uh, the, uh, of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria. I don't think so. Because if, such is, uh, if they are ready to produce a president at least come 2023, by now they're supposed to be forming an alliance with other this and other other tribes, other states, other party faithfuls. Uh, I think so. Uh, 
I think there, there have been um, agitation from that part of the, the country for them to produce a president. Like, they feel it's their own time for Nigeria to have a president from that part of the country. Here's my take. Now, not one day has passed without a bad report or mishap in Nigeria. And the country is fast becoming a place where negative stories dominate the news. So the question is why? This is because we lack true leadership and a sense of direction, especially at a time when we need it the most. A promise and oath that every Nigerian leader or office holder had made seems to no longer hold water because these people have failed to live up to any of these promises. They only, they only pick and choose when to act on issues that affect the common man, but they will roar and fight and politic when it is in their own interest. So where do we come in here? When will we be top of the shelf? We're killed, we're kidnapped, we're maimed daily with no recourse, no empathy, no consequence. Why are we even Nigerians? Of what value is it to be a Nigerian? Who is a Nigerian if our lives are of no value? If our leaders do not prioritize or fight for us, what is in it for us? How do we build a nation where peace and justice will reign if we are divided as a people? We cannot let these naysayers continuously sway us to destroy ourselves. So Nigerians need to band together against injustice and bad leadership. So we need to put an end to this right now. My name is Mariana Kohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.